Amen and amen. Brothers and sisters, we are back to a regular programming and the Lord is gracious. We we'll thank him for what he himself did, the way he did it on this short mission. We'll come to that some other time. Our time is quite gone, but please bear with me. This lesson is so important. If you've been following the current course we're doing, ministry, discover, pursue, fulfill, you know, we've done eight lessons so far, and by the grace of the Lord, they lay a strong foundation for the reality that Elohim has called every single believer. If you are born again, implied in your new birth experience is a call, and that is something the Lord wants us to know. It's not negotiable. We are a kingdom of priests and kings. All of us, not some of us, not a few selected people, the whole body, the whole body. In order to function optimally, everyone needs to discover what part you are. And in that regard, Lord, this day the Lord wants to share us in Lesson 9, Chapter 9, the pursuit of ministry, the case for divine connection, alignment, and unity. The case is going to be made today. And what the Lord wants to teach us is very critical because a lot of people have discovered their ministry and destroyed the church of Yeshua. A lot of people have discussed, discovered their ministry and they went on to do it as their ministry, not his ministry. His ministry tends towards his body, imagine. But once you begin to flow in that me, mine, I, you automatically begin to walk against the purpose of the head of the church, the king of the kingdom. And that's why it's important for us to just consider what the Lord will release today so that we receive it. The Lord doesn't want anybody to receive this uh, course, and then you run off and say, I've discovered my ministry, and boom, you begin, you begin your own church, you begin your own entity, even when the Lord has not called you in that area, or even if he's called you, he's not called you to go and be a visionary on your own. He's called you to be part of a body, part of a, a, a group of people through whom he will manifest his glory and purpose. And if you are not walking towards that in your environment, in the way the Lord has brought you, and you're walking towards your own, your own, and you're against others and others against you, you're already in error. And I pray we'll understand the mystery the Lord wants to unpack to us today. Let's pray. Father in heaven, let your name be glorified. We give you praise. We ask you to just have your way by your spirit and bring forth the truth that you yourself ordained for us before the foundation of this world. Grant us understanding. Grant us comprehension. Grant us the grace to do according to your word. In Yeshua Jesus' name, amen. Brothers and sisters, in the preceding lesson, we, we saw that beyond the general call, Elohim calls every believer, there are specific ways and specific assignments he may give to you. He may give you an understanding of them, and the purpose is, number one, to build up the body of Yeshua where you are planted, where you are, which you are part of, whether it's a local congregation, whether it's a network, whether it's a church in the city. Secondly, it's also to enable you to function as part of the royal priesthood, which imparts heavenly virtue as salt and light upon this environment. So it's critically important that a paradigm shift will occur in the heart and mind of all saints who want to answer the call to minister or who have answered the call to minister. That shift has to do with a transitioning from an I, a me, to an us and a we, an us mentality. That paradigm shift is critical. If this shift does not occur, the old man will be resurrected to sit upon the throne of the heart of the individual saint that ought to belong to Yeshua alone. And this makes a mess of ministry. By corruption of motives, you can do your own things thinking that you are doing it for the Lord. You can build your own empire thinking you are building it for the Lord. Because self will corrupt the purpose of Elohim. Self was activated on the day of the fall of man. So the field of contemporary ministry is filled with tiny, ineffective, self-driven entities registered to serve individuality rather than the corporality which Yeshua envisaged for his body. You see, it's so much everywhere you see people. Seven people there, seventeen people there, fifteen people there, just there. 
they are satisfied. What they are doing inside a, a building, four walls of a building, they are not touching the community. They are not impacting anything. They just gather so that a man will answer senior pastor, overseer, overseer, 17 people. And they, they, it becomes a title. People are coveting, coveting. And this delicious ambition, men and brethren, the Lord doesn't want participants in this course to miss this point because with the, the calling should be a grace to, to flow in the purpose of the Lord, not to be disruptive or, you know, to, to the local assembly where you belong or the network where you are part of or the ministry you are part of. No, don't go pursuing your dreams and visions to the, you know, claiming Holy Spirit is leading you when all he's doing is simply to wreak havoc on the body. So this is so important that we know. Because the moment you begin to be sorted in your own, your own, ambition will be unleashed. And ambition and vision are two opposite. Vision is from the Lord. And it leads to emergence of the kingdom, the body. The glory of the Lord is in his body. Okay? Ambition is selfish and self-centered. And it leads to laceration of the body. It leads to cheering off. It leads to just Ego tripping in different ways. Men and brethren, when Yeshua is seated on the throne of the heart of all saints, it is easy for each other called by him to find connection with others and align to do things together. It's very important. It's not difficult for saints who are equally called by the same Yeshua who called the vision holder. Let's say there's a church. There are 35 adults there. 17 young people and some children. It's not difficult in that setting, for instance. As you discover your, your calling, you are discovering it as part of that overall assignment. And then it's easy for you to align with the vision holder or the overseer or the senior pastor, as the case may be. It's easy for you to connect, bring your gift and calling so that together, you all will be a fuller expression of Yeshua by what every joy supplies. The body makes increase of itself in love internally and then externally is able to impart by the law of synergy, spiritual synergy. And this principle is so important because that's how we can be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Remember what Yeshua said in Matthew chapter 5 from verse 13, you are the salt of the earth, but if salt have lost its savour, where we shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden on the food of men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it on their bushel, but on a candlestick, and they give a light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Part of that good work is seen, brethren, from different backgrounds, races, cultures come together and be an expression of the holy body of Yeshua, walking in love and unity, the two pillars of the kingdom. Men and brethren, people see this, they know that the Lord is here because it's not natural. It's not natural. It's not ordinary. See people, male, female, young, old, from different cultures come together, you know, and there's smoothness. There's no dissonance. The Lord is glorified. He's lifted up. People know this is of the Lord. But you have a situation where in another place, people are just, everybody wants his own, his own, so and so ministries, so and so ministries, so and so ministries, and each of them is ineffective on their own. So when he says about salt, when salt loses its savour, the ability to, you know, bring flavour into whatever you connect it with, when salt loses that savouring capacity, it says, says what good for nothing but the throne on the foot. Are you not seeing it all over the world? Social media, denigrating the church. Mainstream media, denigrating the church. Governments stepping upon the church, doing whatever they like, passing all kinds of laws. Just all kinds of people are trampling on the church. And the reason is that the church, which refuses to walk in love and unity, makes itself open to be treated in this way. So it's, uh, when this kind of kingdom connection is missing, the church becomes less than what it ought to be. 
So let's look at the mystery of corporality. The mystery of corporality was introduced to saints as a foundational reality of the kingdom in the very name of Elohim himself. Elohim is the God that is us. And that's the concept. Elohim, right from the beginning. And God said, Genesis 1 to 6, let us make man in our own image, after our own likeness. And you see that. Then when Noah, when the flood was to destroy humanity, Elohim decided to save Noah. Noah was found fit. Elohim didn't save him alone. He saved him and seven other members of his family, his spouse, his sons, and their wives. So eight souls were saved. What of it? Israel? Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. And Israel connotes corporality. There are 12 tribes, yes, but it's one nation of Israel. There are 12 tribes, yes, but it's one set of people, the Hebrews as a people. And even when, even though the 10 tribes lost their identity and the Jews, you know, the tribe of Judah became predominant and from there we have the Jews as a people, we see them, it's all corporality. The Jews as a people. When Moses will have been preserved alone, Elohim in Exodus 32 wanted to wipe off Israel for their stiff nakedness and keep Moses alone. Moses interceded with him. Elohim relented from destroying them and preserved them as a people. Brothers and sisters, in the New Testament, have we forgotten that right at the baptism of Yeshua at the river Jordan, what happened? The heavens opened. The voice of the Father came through, Holy Spirit came through bodily like a dove to alight on him, and Yeshua was there. We see the, the triune personalities of the God there right there. And men and brethren, what are the feeling of you know the day of Pentecost? The Lord will have filled Peter alone. No, he didn't do that. About 120 people gathered in the upper room, as we are told in the book of Acts 1 12 to 15. About 120 people gathered. And what do we learn? In Acts chapter 2, 1 to 4, every single one was filled and the church was bettered. Corporality, together, together, together. The 12 apostles were chosen together. They didn't choose one, they chose 12. If you look at that scripture, we talk about in Mark 3, 13 to 16. Then when it was time, you know, the early church was going on and going on. And there was a need for deacons to come and handle the business of the church. They didn't choose a man. What did they do? They chose seven. Seven people. Brothers and sisters, that's Acts chapter 6, verse 1, 2, 6. And then verse 7 tells us when they chose these people, the word of God increased, the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. Corporality, the mystery. When it was time to define how the leadership of the New Testament church would be, you know what happened? A clear, incontrovertible model was not a papacy. Not one person sitting on a throne with a big cap and stuff like that and, you know, frowning his head and doing all kinds of those things. No. What did the Lord tell Paul? Ephesians 4, 11. He gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the divine of the body. The fivefold shows us corporality. Brothers and sisters, even at that, what about the body? If you look at 1 Corinthians 12, from verse 12 to 14, for as the body is one and has many members, and all members of that one body, being one, many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. Men and brethren, go all right down to the end. It's so important. The Lord wants us to have a paradigm shift that we think of ourselves in terms of we, us, our, always, so that even when you discover your gift and calling, you are not running off to do it in a way that scatters things. No, you bring it in to blend into a team. And I want to challenge people. There are so many people running ineffective, inconsequential, so-called ministries. Is it not possible for three, four, five, six, seven pastors who are in the same environment, 
whose work are ineffective, who have different giftings. Is it not possible for the one who is gifted with healing? Is it not possible who is gifted with wisdom? Is it not possible for the one who is gifted in you know care, pastoral care? Is it not possible for the one who is gifted in deliverance? Is it not possible for the ones gifted in other ways? Is it not possible for them prayerfully to come together? Prayerfully receive each other, knowing that the church is you know, body, complementary, not competitive. Is it not possible for them to come into alignment, either to do things together or to tap into the grace in each other? Why all this hatred? Why all this animosity? Why all this evil speaking? Why all this tearing at each other? Brothers and sisters, this thing needs to happen in us, the concept of the church as a body, the concept of the church as one, many members, but one. And brothers and sisters, the Great Commission for Kingdom Expansion was not given to one person. It was given to the body. Let's look at the language. Mark 16. I want you to take note now. Many years ago, the Lord opened our eyes to this. Mark 16 from verse 15. And he said unto them, them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Verse 17, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven, sat on the right hand of God, and they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them and confirming the word with signs following. Brothers and sisters, body consciousness solves many problems. You know, we had an issue in the family and the issue needed the body. What did we do? We tapped into the grace in the brethren in Kilgore, GPRC. Pastor Ron, Pastor Ron, uh, uh, Janda, and their son, Pastor Jerry, uh, Prophet Jeremiah, and Pastor Brittany, we tap into the grace of the brethren there. We tap into the grace in Apostle Sheldon and Lady Deborah and the family. We tap into the grace in Apostle Didi and uh, Dr. Uh, Pastor Julia Oparocha in Connecticut. We tap into the grace that was in Apostle Joe Mokwe in New York. We tapped into the grace in brethren, Miss and Michelle, Teacher Stephanie, in different ways. In different ways. And you know what? That problem solved. Elohim doing a work. It takes pride not to tap into the body. It takes pride not to recognize the body. It takes pride to want to do things, your own little thing, your own pocket. Listen, the Lord didn't make a mistake in making all of us in, you know, or incomplete in ourselves. He wanted us to be interdependent. And that body consciousness is important. Brothers and sisters, he wants to remind us that discovery ministry is not enough. For seeing ministry that is discovered needs to be properly situated in an organic context of body ministry. What this means is that the purpose of being gifted differently is not to emphasize our capacity to function independently, but rather to cause us to see the need to be interdependent in order to minister to each other, grow up in Yeshua, Jesus in all things. It's so important. Deriving heavenly synergy from such alignments, we're able to impact the world around us to the degree it could not be impacted if we were functioning separately. I told you many a number of times, I think what we're doing now would not have been possible but for the sacrifice of elect our son. You know, elect, by the grace of the Lord, the Lord blessed him with academic uh, uh, exploits. You know, he could have just begun to chase any job, but he didn't just want to take any kind of job. He's concerned with his own spiritual growth. He's concerned with his environment. He's concerned with where he will be and he'll be able to be the kingdom citizen he is. And so what he did he joyfully he is the one setting up all this, the configuration of the system, all that, all this, and look at even the quality sorted out because of that sacrifice. That is what we're saying. In every way, in every level, family level, local assembly level, the body level, networks, the Lord wants us to have this com 
this operality perspective. Recognize your strength. Recognize your limitation. Be willing to tap into what is in others. So as you discover your spiritual DNA and locate your ministry, think in terms of being part of a kingdom community brought into being by leading of Holy Spirit, not self, not the will of man. Think in terms of where you are, can invest all that is in you, others invest all that is in them, and there will be a viable expression of the body of Yeshua. This is the only way the Omega Church will be able to shine in the bright radiance at the end of the day. It's so important. When saints lose this proclivity for, you know, for self, because they are dead to their self, desires and impulses, Holy Spirit uses them as pure vessels, releasing the fullness of the presence and power of the King just as he promised. Men and brethren, the Lord say John 12, 24, very, very, I saw unto you, except the corner will fall into the ground and die. It abided a little, but if it dies, it brings much fruit. It takes death of self for us to become all the Lord ordained. If self remains, the Lord can move. Self is an enemy of the gospel, is an enemy of God. Self is an adversary of the believer also. What did he say? Matthew 18, 19, and 20. And again, I saw unto you, if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they ask, agreement, it takes death of self to agree with another human being. Because ego is there. Have you not seen people? We want to pray. Let us pray. Before you even say the prayer point, they are off, praying what they want. Some praying in Greek tongue, Aramic tongue, you know, American tongue. Hebraic tongue, all kinds of tongues. You've not even said the prayer point. You see, that's self. Self-projection. You see, if you shall agree on earth, touching a thing, it shall be done of you, my Father, which is heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, blending, I'm right there. In this situation where self disappears and only the king matters, the greater works he promised becomes an existential reality. He said in John 14, 12, Very like so unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, he shall also do, and greater works than this shall he do, because I go to my Father. Part of the reason this is not going on, it's not happening, is the individualism of the church. Brothers and sisters, that's why the New Testament is hinged on love and unity. John 13, 34, 35. John 15, 12, you know, all the way to 16. John 17, 20 to 23. Love and unity are the strong pillars of the new covenant church. There may be no great sanctuaries. The church may not have great sanctuaries. There may be no music equipment. There may not be any finance or infrastructure. However, where these two pillars of the kingdom are, love and unity, holiness will flow. The presence of God will flow. Death of self will bring about the fullness of the divine presence. You know what Ephesians 3.10 says, to the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be made known by the church the manifold wisdom of Elohim. That Elohim wants to make known his manifold wisdom through the church. The principalities and powers in heavenly places say, wow, this is possible. Black, white, red, green, blue, Latino, all together, male, female, young, old, you know, unto the Lord, each one taking his place. No strife, no quarreling, no abusing, no insult, and there's a blend. Grace is poured out. Brothers and sisters, the difference between the church which Yeshua is building and the one humans are building lies in the singular concept of corporality, which is expressed in or manifested by his multi-member body. It's so important. The Omega Church will witness ministers who deliberately decrease, dispel all humanistic thought process so that the body can manifest. And that takes a lot of a lot of grace. I'm going to one of these series, we're going to talk about the special ministry of visionaries. Because if they do not catch the vision, they will lay the foundation for this to emerge. If they do not catch the vision, and they make it about themselves, they miss it. But if they catch the vision, the Lord will use them to really set things out in such a way that everybody can find space to function. 
And this is so important. Brothers and sisters, when we get these things right, we begin to plug into the heartbeat of the Lord. He takes responsibility to grow the church. It's not our responsibility. It's his. Forget all these church growth strategies. People go and learn marketing and advertising techniques and say church growth. No. Yeshua takes responsibility for building his church. Didn't he say in the book of John 10, 16, and other sheep I have which are yet not which are not yet in the fold. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Brothers and sisters, he is building his church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against his church. He gives us the keys of the kingdom. It's all based on the understanding that we are going to operate with one mind, one heart. So that, brothers and sisters, we need to reject the selfish, self-centered you know, uh, ways of Nimrod and the Babylonian system he instituted, we need to reject it fundamentally so that we can be all. We can make room in our hearts for other brethren to bring their gifts and callings. And that's one thing you look at. If you're a leader, look out for those who have that spirit of grace to look out for others. They will make great leaders. If you see somebody who wants to do it all alone in her own in this whole little corner and all that and push everyone out, you've seen somebody who's not a leader. You know, and that's so important. Brothers and sisters, assignment. Please summarize the central thesis of this lesson. What did you receive? The central thesis. Two, in what way did this lesson minister to you personally? So we're back, hopefully, by the grace of the Lord, we'll finish this course, you know, between now and Monday and see what the Lord will do. So please, Pray for us that grace will be received for us to begin to bring forth the fullness of the divine counsel in a way that will help people to take decisions. Because at the end of the day, brothers and sisters, decisions matter. If you hear and it sounds good to you, you didn't make a decision. So the question is, what will you do as a person for, this, uh, for the, the fact the Lord is bringing out before us today, the truth the Lord is bringing out to us today? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your goodness and mercy and loving kindness. Father, we receive your word. It came as correction. It came as direction. It came as instruction. Just walk in every heart to respond the way you ordain. To your own glory and praise. Thank you, Father. In Yeshua Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for being with us on this program and watching and we believe you learned something and the Lord bless you. Now it's time to connect with us on our social media platforms. We have a daily live stream on Facebook Monday all the way to Sunday every day by about 10.30 a.m. UK time and that's the same of Nigerian time and you, it's either Apostle George Monday to Friday uh, to Thursday, Pastor Grace uh, Friday to Sunday and then in the evening of Sunday we have two sessions from 5.30 to about 6 after 6 another one up to 7 so please join us on the live stream and you're going to enjoy it we also visit our website www.gsom.ac to download free ebooks this course you just listened to all these lessons you know there's an ebook we have free of charge everything we do is free but more importantly you can actually do your program on you know ebooks you can do your program entirely on ebooks and with this video or anyone you want you can also if you want to do the yes course or be, do the master class you can go to www.kingdomboostclub.com and you can subscribe so that you can do it. You can also subscribe to our channels. This YouTube, gsom.tv, and we also have a Telegram channel, gsom media. You can send us an email at akclife.tv at gmail.com. We love you dearly, and we want to partner with you to make sure that the body of Yeshua, Jesus, is empowered with truth. Remember, it is the teach, train, equip, activate and release paradigm absolutely free of charge have a blessed day and we'll see you again soon